This is MathHeals.com where you can find more links to math and computer science YouTube videos. And let's take a look at factoring trinomials. Now um, these are our different methods of factoring we're going to be taking a look at. There's actually two more we'll add at the bottom, uh, but these are the five important ones. First one is GCF, uh, and I put an asterisk by it. You always try to do this one. This is the greatest common factor. Second one is grouping, and this is when you have four more terms. Now, PST method and key number method is what this lesson's about. PST method when it is when it's of the form um, x squared plus bx plus c. Basically, you have an x squared, x, no x, and there's no number in front of your x squared. Now, b and c are usually numbers, but they don't have to be. Key number method is when it's of the form um, ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, key part here is you have an x squared, x, no x, and there's a number in front of your x squared. So again, x squared, x, no x, number in front of your x squared. And then our fifth uh, important method is the dots method, difference two squares. This is two terms of the minus between them. We'll also have difference two cubes and sum of two cubes. Uh, which you don't see very much in um, college algebra. These are the five important ones for you to know going into college algebra. Um, if you know these, you're going to be in pretty good shape factoring-wise. There'll be a couple problems you won't be able to do with the difference in sum of two cubes. Let's look at our first one here. We got uh, x squared plus 14x plus 40. Let's start going through our methods. GCF. Uh, greatest common factor, they don't have anything in common. Grouping, that's only when you have four more terms, so that doesn't work. PST, x squared x, no x, no number in front of the x squared. x squared x, no x, no number in front of the x squared. This is the PST method. Well, with the PST method, we're going to create three columns based upon the 40, the number at the end. Now, if it was a negative 40, we'd still just go with 40. We handle signs later on. A P column, an S column, and a D column. The P stands for product, the S stands for sum, and the D stands for difference. In the P column, we're going to write down all the products give us 40. Well, there's 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 3 doesn't uh, go into it, 4 times 10, 5 times 8, 6 doesn't, um, 7 doesn't, and then next one would be 8 times 5, which we already wrote down here. Now the S column, uh, S stands for sum, so we're going to add these numbers together, or uh, yeah, the S stands for sum, we're going to add these two numbers together. 1 plus 40 is 41, 2 plus 20 is 22, 4 plus 10 is 14, 5 plus 8 is 13. A difference column. We're going to subtract these, smaller from larger. 40 minus 1 is 39. 20 minus 2 is 18. 10 minus 4 is 6. 8 minus 5 is 3. Now, the number we're looking for is a number on our middle term, which is 14, which is right here, which means we're going to use 4 and 10. Like that. Now, um, we got a note that goes along with the PST method. The larger number in the P column that we're using, the larger number in the P column is always the same sign as the middle term. So a larger number in a P column is always the same sign as the middle term. The numbers we're using are 4 and 10, and our larger number is the 10. And it's always going to be the same sign as the middle term. Middle term up here was positive, so this is going to be a positive 10. Now, if the number we circled is in the S column, S uh, represents same signs. If the number we circled is in the difference column, this D column, then D would be different signs. Now, same signs means they're both positive, both negative. Different signs means one's positive and one's negative. Well, the number we circled is in the S column, so S means same signs. 
And since we already said 10 was positive, that means that the 4 has to be positive. And that would be your answer. Okay, let's look at another problem. This is a different variable, but still the same idea. It's q squared plus 6q minus 72. Our first method is GCF. Well, they don't have anything in common. Um, some of them have 6 divisible by 6, but the first one isn't. Some of them have q's, but the last one doesn't. Four more terms, grouping. No, this is three terms. PST. Now, it's a different variable, but it's still the same form. Now, the form we're looking for is q squared, q, no q, and no number in front of our q squared. So that fits. We take our number at the end, which is 72, and we're going to create our three columns. We write down all products, give us 72. So we've got 1 times 72, 2 times 36, 3 times 24, 4 times something, uh, 18. 5, no, 6 times 12, uh, 7, no, um, 8 times 9. And I think that's all of them. Now, if you have trouble coming up with these, just use your calculator. Do 72 divided by 2, you'll get 36. 72 divided by 3 gives you 24. 72 divided by 4 gives you 18. 72 divided by 5 gives you some kind of decimal. If you get a decimal, it doesn't divide into it evenly. Now, the S column, we're going to add these together. 1 plus 72 is 73. 2 plus 36 is 38. 3 plus 24 is 27. 4 plus 18 is 22. 6 plus 12 is 18. 8 plus 9 is 17. Difference column, we have to subtract these. 72 minus 1 is 71. 36 minus 2 is 34. 24 minus 3 is 21. 18 minus 4 is 14. 12 minus 6 is 6. And 9 minus 8 is 1. Now, the number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 6, which is right here, which means we're going to use 6 and 12. Okay. Now remember our note up above. Larger number in the uh, P column that we're using, larger number is the 12, will always be the same size as the middle term. Middle term is positive. So this will be positive. Now the number we circled is in a difference column, D for different signs, so if the 12 is positive, then the 6 has to be negative. And that's our answer. Um, let me start a new page. Okay, so we got negative p squared plus 5p plus 50. We start going through our methods. Our first method is GCF. And GCF says if your first term is negative, you always want to factor out a negative. So first off, before I do anything, I'll bring out a negative. Now when you do that, it flips the sign of everything inside. So negative p squared becomes positive p squared, 5p becomes negative 5p, and 50 becomes a negative 50. Now looking at what's inside, that was GCF on that one. Now looking at what's inside here, we have a p squared, p, no p, and there's no number in front of a p squared. That's PSD. So we'll take our number at the end, which is a 50. We ignore signs, we handle signs later on, and we come up with our three columns. We're going to write down all products, give us 50. We've got 1 times 50, 2 times 25, 3, no, 4, no, 5 times 10. Now we're going to add them together. That's the S column. 1 plus 50 is 51. 2 plus 25 is 27. 5 plus 10 is 15. In the difference column, we'll subtract them. 50 minus 1 is 49. 25 minus 2 is 23. 10 minus 5 is 5. Now, we want to go to the step, this last step we're on. We don't want to go back up to the original one. So we're looking for a 5, which is right here. Now, this method always works. So if you don't see your number over here, that means you messed up one of your, um, your products, or you added or subtracted wrong, 
or the other option is it's prime, means it can't be factored. Um, but we found a 5 here. Now the negative just carries down out in front. Numbers we're using are 5 and 10. Numbers over in our P column. Now the larger number in your P column, which is the 10, is always going to be the same sign as the middle term. Middle term right here was negative, so this is a negative 10. The number we circled is in a difference column, D for different signs, so if this one's negative, this one has to be positive. And that's our answer. Okay, let's look at uh, one more of these. We've got m squared plus 13mn. Hopefully this is just review. You've seen this in uh, elementary algebra or algebra 1. First method, GCF. Well, they don't have anything in common, so that doesn't work. Um, let's see, second methods, groupings, four more terms. No, that doesn't fit. Uh, PST method, M squared, M, no M, and there's no number in front of our M squared. Notice how I've been emphasizing that form over and over. M squared, M, no M, no number in front of our M squared. This is PST again. We got some extra junk in here, but we'll see how to handle that. We take our number at the end, which is a 30, ignoring signs. We also ignore that n squared. And we're going to come up with our columns. We'll write down all products, give us 30. We got 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, uh, 4, no, 5 times 6. We're going to add them together, that's the s column. 1 plus 30 is 31, 2 plus 15 is 17, 3 plus 10 is 13. 5 plus 6 is 11. Subtract them. That's our difference column. 30 minus 1 is 29. 15 minus 2 is 13. 10 minus 3 is 7. And 6 minus 5 is 1. Number we're looking for is 13. Now we got two 13. Sometimes people ask, can I stop once I find my number? And 95% of the time you can. Uh, the other 5%, you'll find the number occurs in both columns, and you have to figure out which one to use. Now, until you get comfortable with the signs, just pick one and see if it works. When I say see if it works, after you get your answer, just multiply it back through and see if you get your original answer. If you, d if you do, then that means it worked. Now, 13 we're going to pick is the one right here. So we're going to use 3 and 10. Why did I know that? When you got a positive number here at the end, the only way you can get a positive is when the signs are the same. So you'll always use a number in the S column. If this was a negative at the end, then you'd have to use a difference column. Okay, so we're going to have M, M, and we said we're using 3 and 10. Now our note on our signs, the larger number in our P column that we're using, which is a 10, is always going to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. The number we circled in the S column, S for same sign, so if this one's positive, then this one has to be positive. Now how you handle those extra variables is, notice how we put M here and M here? We'll just put an N at the end and an N at the end, like that. Because if you look at the form, you got M squared, M, no M. Going backwards, you have N squared, N, no N. So it, it works exactly the same as the last problems. You just have to put your N's on at the end. And that's your answer. Next one, I believe, is the key number. So let's take a look at how to do those. So I've got 3x squared minus 11x minus 20. We start going through our methods. GCF, they don't have anything in common. Grouping is when you have four more terms. Let me grab a drink here. Well, four more terms, that doesn't fit. That's not grouping. PSD. When well, it's close, we have x squared x, no x, but there's a number in front of x squared. So it's actually key number. Key number is when you have the x squared x, no x, and there's a number in front of your x squared. Or what uh, you could have, instead of x's, you can have any variable, but this is key number. With key number, we take the number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So we're going to take 3 times 20, and that gives us 60. And we're going to come up with our three columns again. We're going to use them slightly different, though. We're going to write down all products, give us 60. we got 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 
3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, and 6 times 10. S column, we add these together. 1 plus 60 is 61. 2 plus 30 is 32. 3 plus 20 is 23. 4 plus 15 is 19. 5 plus 12 is 17. 6 plus 10 is 16. Difference column, we subtract them. 60 minus 1 is 59. 30 minus 2 is 28. 20 minus 3 is 17. 15 minus 4 is 11. 12 minus 5 is 7. 10 minus 6 is 4. We're still looking for the number in the middle. That doesn't change. So we're looking for 11, which is right here, which means we're going to use 4 and 15. But we're going to use it slightly differently. We're going to rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. Now all of our notes on our signs still holds true. The larger number in the P column, which is the 15, is always going to be the same size as the middle term. The middle term's negative, so we're going to have a negative 15x. The number I circles in a difference column, D for different signs, uh, means one's positive and one's negative. Since the, the 15 was negative, then the 4 has to be positive. So again, we're rewriting our middle term using those two numbers. It's like going backwards combined together like terms. Well, then we use factoring by grouping. Looking at our first group, they have a 3 and an x in common, and that gives me x minus 5. Second group, they have a 4 in common, and that gives us x minus 5. Remember our goal with grouping is we want that parentheses to match that, and it does. So I can factor out an x minus 5. And you can cross out those x minus 5s to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, which would be 3x plus 4. And that's our answer. Um, let's look at another one. We've got 28 y squared minus y minus 2. Okay, um, GCF. They don't have anything in common. Groupings, four more terms. This is three terms. That doesn't fit. PSD is close. We have a y squared y, no y, but uh, we can't have any number in front of the y squared. Key number. Key number says you're going to have y squared y, no y, and there's a number in front of your y squared. Now, Or you can have any variable. So we're going to take our number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So we take 28 times 2. Gives us 56. And we'll come up with our three columns based upon 56. We write down all products, give us 56. We got 1 times 56, 2 times 28, 3, no, 4 times um, 14, 5, no, 6, no, uh, 7 times 8. I guess that's it. Um, S column, add them together. 1 plus 56 is 57. 2 plus 28 is 30. 4 plus 14 is 18. 7 plus 8 is 15. Difference columns, subtract them. 56 minus 1 is 55. 28 minus 2 is 26. 14 minus 4 is 10. 8 minus 7 is 1. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 1, which is right here, which means we use 7 and 8. And again, what we do is we rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. The larger number in your P column, which is 8, is always going to be the same size as the middle term, which is negative. So we've got negative 8y. The number we circled is in the D column, D for different signs, so if the 8 is negative, then the 7 has to be positive. Then we're going to factor by grouping. So looking at the first group, they have a 4 and a y in common. And that gives us 7y minus 2. Now you always want to factor something out. So if you can factor nothing else out, factor out a positive 1. And that leaves us 7y minus 2. Our goal was to get these parentheses the same, which they are. So I'll factor out a 7y minus 2. And you can cross out to 7y minus 2's to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, which would be 4y plus 1. And that's our answer. Let me um, start a new page. And let's look at our next problem.
Now these do have to be in standard form, which they have been so far. Standard form means you pick a variable, doesn't matter which one, like I pick R, and you should have it from largest power of R down to smallest. R squared, R, no R. So that's in standard form. Okay, um, my first one, and yeah, I'm going to have to get a calculator for this one. It's kind of big numbers. Our first method is GCF. Uh, they don't have anything in common. Uh, second method is um, groupings. Four more terms. That doesn't fit. PSD, PSD doesn't fit because it has a number in front of your R squared. But key number. We have an R squared, R, no R, and there's a number in front of our R squared. That fits the key number form. So we'll take the number at the beginning times the number at the end. We'll take 14 times 10, ignoring signs, though there are, everything's positive here. And we get 140. Right now, all products give us 140. 1 times 140, 2 times 70, 3, no, 4 times something, uh, 12 to 5, 0 to, yeah, 4 times 35. Um, 5 times something, 28, 6, no, 7 times 20, let me get my calculator, okay, I don't want to think that hard this morning, or this afternoon, day's slipping away, 140 divided by 8, no, 140 divided by 9, no, 140 divided by 10, well, I know that's right, 10 times 14, Let's see, 140 divided by 11, no, 140 divided by 12, no, next one to go, so th that appears like that's all of them. Okay, we'll add them, the S column, 1 plus 140 is 141, 2 plus 70 is 72, 4 plus 35 is 39, 5 plus 28 is 33, 7 plus 20 is 27, 10 plus 14 is 24, Subtract them. Smallest from larger. Smaller from larger. 140 minus 1 is 139. 70 minus 2 is 68. 35 minus 4 is 31. 28 minus 5 is um, 23. 20 minus 7 is 13. And um, 10 mi or 14 minus 10 is 4. I was looking for my number. I didn't see it. I see it now. We're looking for 39. Here's our 39, so we're going to use 4 and 35. I, always, I sometimes kid in my class, say, how many of these do you have to get right? The correct answer is one of them. You just have to get the one that's your answer correct. The others you can all add and subtract wrong. Uh, but you have to get this one right. Um, sometimes people uh, get that answer when I ask that question. You know, I'm just kidding, of course. It's nice if you have them all right, but you have to get this one right. Okay, so um, the... We want to rewrite our middle term using these two numbers. Larger number, which is the 35, is going to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. Now, the number we circled in the S column, S for same sign, so if the 35 is positive, the 4 has to be positive. Then we want to factor by grouping. First group has a 7R in common, so that gives me 2R plus 5. Second group has a 2 in common, and that gives me 2R plus 5 when I factor it out. Well, our goal was to get that parentheses the same as that, which they are. So I'll factor out a 2R plus 5 out in front. And you could cross those out to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, which would be 7R plus 2. And that's our answer. Uh, here we got uh, 4m squared plus 19mn minus 5n squared. Okay, first method is GCF. Now yeah, look at all three terms, they don't have anything in common. Groupings, four more terms, that doesn't fit. PSD doesn't fit. Key number though, let's take a look at that. I've been emphasizing this form over and over. M squared, M, no M, and there's no there's a number in front of your M squared. That's key number. Again, M squared, M, no M, and there's a number in front of your M squared. Now, it's got some extra junk in here, but we'll see how to handle that. 
With our key number, we take our number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So 4 times 5 gives us 20. We want to write down all products give us 20. We got 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Add them. 1 plus 20 is 21. 2 plus 10 is 12. 4 plus 5 is 9. Subtract them. 20 minus 1 is 19. 10 minus 2 is 8. 5 minus 4 is 1. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 19, which is right here. So we'll use 1 and 20. Now we're going to rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. The larger number in your P column, which is 20, is always going to be the same size as the middle term, which is positive. So this will be plus 20MN. And the uh, number I circled is in the difference column, D for different signs. So if the 20 is positive, the 1 has to be negative. So we have minus 1MN. Those extra variables don't matter. Just uh, in our middle term, we have an M and N, and so when we rewrite it, we have an M and N. Now factor by grouping. First group has a 4 and an M in common, and that gives us M plus 5N. Second group, um, first term is negative, so I factor out a negative, and they both have an N. And that's going to give us M plus 5N. Now our goal is to get the m plus 5n's the same, which they are, so I'll factor that out. And you can cross out the m plus 5n's and see what goes in your second set of parentheses, which is the 4m minus n. And that's our answer. Now the PSD method, the first one we looked at in this lesson, um, I made that up. So if you've never heard of that before, don't, uh, don't be upset at your algebra teacher thinking they didn't uh, show that to you. Um, the key number, I made up part of that. Um, the key number part, uh, that came from a, from another book. But I added the PSD table. So you don't have to sit there and in your head try to think what multiplied together um, gives you this, that added or subtracted um, you know, will give you the, the number in the middle. So um, I think that's the last problem. Yes, it is. So let me go ahead and save this now.